Well, thank you everyone for this meeting. My name is Mohit and today I'm going to present the proposed solution for Roads for Everyone, which is a chari global charity firm um, uh, with the aim to improve the uh, infrastructure, specifically roads in developing countries. Uh, they are based out in USA, uh, their main headquarter. However, they have regional offices in EMEA, APAC, and some branch offices in Canada, Zimbabwe, and India. Uh, the business model is uh, primarily focused on you know, uh, fundraising activities across the world, as well as run campaigns for events such as earthquake. Uh, so, and and the, uh, the business model is of course B2B uh, with corporate firms as donors, B2C as individual donors, and they also deal with some contractors for building the roads. Uh, for this project, their goal is to review their existing IT infrastructure and replace it. And they uh, they would like to decommission their existing CRM and replace with uh, Salesforce. So in order to embark on the journey uh, on Salesforce platform, they're looking for recommendations. So um, in, in the next 45 minutes, we'll be talking about the system landscape, the various Salesforce strategies, um, the data model, which is efficient for role hierarchy and data security, followed by identity strategy, data migration strategy. And then we'll look at the business requirement solution and in, in the end, the governance model for the successful uh, execution of this program. So moving on to my system landscape, uh, the Salesforce org is called out in the middle. Uh, we'll be using Sales Cloud for a certain internal uh, business user requirements, Experience Cloud with uh, two communities for contractors and donors. And then we'll also use Salesforce consent management uh, a data model uh, for certain consent requirements. Salesforce connect with external objects will be used to display some historical data stored in a data warehouse via data protocol, Salesforce files for document management, Salesforce support for uh, reports for operational reporting and Tableau CRM uh, for advanced analytics, uh, which connects with Salesforce via local connector. Uh, then we also have marketing cloud, uh, which uh, wherein we'll be using Journey Builder, uh, Email Studio, and Mobile Studio plus Advertising Studio um, for certain marketing uh, and campaign requirements. Um, and it connects with Salesforce via Marketing Cloud Connect. And the beauty of that is that it it doesn't consume any SOAP and REST limits, uh, API limits. Uh, also, we have FB and Twitter, which are set up as the authorization provider for social sign-on for donors. Uh, we have two mobile apps in the scope, uh, a React Native mobile app for internal users, which are project managers, and then uh, you know some street fundraisers who are also internal users will be using Salesforce mobile app. I didn't see any mobile requirement for external users like donors, so I, I have not. I'm not recommending that. On the left, we have uh, certain inter, uh, existing tools uh, or, or the systems which will be uh, retaining or not retaining. So we're starting with Azure integration tools. So it's it's uh, existing integration setup and the, there are some challenges with the data quality. So my recommendation is to retire that. Uh, also, they're using MailChimp currently as their marketing solution. And since marketing cloud plays really well with Salesforce and uh, satisfy most of the business requirements, my recommendation is to also decommission this one and use Marketing Cloud. Public website uh, will be retained to display uh, some of the dynamic data. We'll talk about that. Uh, moving on to my uh, on-prem system. So AD is the currently the identity store for internal users. I'm recommending ADFS uh, for identity management uh, um, and SAML federation. I, I didn't see any requirement for automated user provisioning and deep provisioning, hence ADFS. Uh, they have their custom CRM system, which will be decommissioned and it will be replaced with Salesforce. And in order to migrate the data, I'm recommending a strong ETL product like Informatica, which will use the bulk API to load the data into Salesforce. And uh, it's an expensive tool, but the cost is justified because we'll also use it for archival, uh, you know, the archive the historical data into a new data warehouse, which I'm recommending in my landscape. And also the there is a donor website, uh, which will be decommissioned as well and its data will be migrated as well. 
from its backend and we'll use uh, community for the donor uh, portal purposes. Also, we have Canute banking uh, in integration app and this app, uh, this app will be retained for payment purposes. And uh, in order to orchestrate between Salesforce and this application, uh, I'm recommending an ESB, uh, you know, the gateway of that, which will be installed in DMZ. And uh, it will avoid, avoid the point to point communication between these two systems as well as the website, but also it will do the protocol conversion wherein we'll be integrating from Salesforce via REST, O data, or Comet D protocol, however, Canute banking app, I'm assuming, uh, supports REST API. Uh, so moving on to my so strategies. Uh, so I have, uh, uh, so first is org strategy. Uh, I'm recommending a single org because this is a unified business process, uh, uh, you know, for the whole firm and then uh, unified operating model. Uh, I didn't see any data residency requirements and the volume is manageable in the, you know, in the single org. Multi-language, uh, of course, there are, uh, there are certain requirements to enable it because it operates in different regions. So translation workbench, uh, VF email templates, custom labels will be used to enable it, uh, as well as community language picker will be used for, by external users. Uh, multi currency, uh, there will uh, local currencies uh, need to be set up uh, in different countries. However, uh, for uh, for different users of those countries, however, corporate currency will be USD as per the requirements. My document management strategy, Salesforce files. I didn't see any requirement for video hosting, so I'm sticking with Salesforce files. There's some app, app exchange products and add-ons I'm recommending. I'll cover those as part of uh, the business requirements. Uh, my archival strategy is data warehouse um, um, off platform. I did consider big objects and app exchanges like Oda Siva, but uh, I would like to query the data and expose it by external objects, so sticking with data warehouse. Uh, mobile strategy, React Native uh, for PMs because there are certain uh, requirements for offline uh, to support offline capability uh, and also uh, uh, to enable some advanced camera features of the devices, so hence React Native. Uh, and uh, this will help in uh, you know uh, uh, in uh, you know installing the app both on uh, Android and iOS platform. Uh, street fundraiser, however, will be using SF Mobile app because uh, I'm assuming they don't have offline challenges, and it will help us in meeting the project timelines. Moving on to actors and licenses. Uh, first actor is fundraiser admin, uh, internal user license recommendation is sales cloud and marketing user will be enabled on the user record and they will have access to marketing cloud because uh, they they will be accessing the campaigns uh, and running the campaigns. Uh, then we have charity overseers. Uh, they're not uh, involved in any business process, but they they sit in uh, you know as, as a central team, um, and they would like to oversee all the operations. So I'm recommending Sales Cloud again with a marketing user uh, flag so that they can access the campaigns as well as well as the opportunities uh, Sales Cloud data. Corporate team uh, they will be dealing with the corporate customers uh, or who are the donors. And they, I'm recommending Sales Cloud license for them because they need access to lead and opportunity. Build team, they need to design on the projects, uh, basically the road infrastructure projects. And I'm recommending platform starter license because they just need access to custom objects. And project managers, they also need to oversee the design of the infrastructure projects. So I'm also recommending platform starter because they need access to custom objects. Regional PM directors, due to the same reason, platform starter and project manager report to them. Regional VPs, they have some reporting requirements. So advanced analytic uh, requirements. So I'm recommending Sales Cloud plus WCRM growth so that they can access the whole uh, campaign influence data as well as uh, you know run uh, advanced uh, analytic using WCRM. Street fundraisers uh, again internal users platform starter because they need access to account contact and individual standard object. Uh, donors external user customer community. Uh, I'm assuming they're high volume users uh, considered roughly in, in uh, you know five million users. Uh, a donor plus corporate donor. So I'm recommending customer community for both. And uh, same license I'm recommending for contractors who are external users, but they, there is no advanced sharing requirement. They just need access to custom object. Moving on to role hierarchy. So we have a C global CEO on the top, and then we have charity overseers, who, which is also a global role. And then uh, there is a corporate team, which also works in a global fashion and rolls up to charity overseers so that they can see all the data uh, accessible by corporate team. 
as well as we have uh, VPs, which are uh, per region, there is one VP and they also roll up to charity overseers. Uh, and uh, under VP, we have fundraiser admin, which operate at the country level. Then we have PM directors and PMs. Uh, I, I didn't connect the dots here, but I'm also assuming that they will also uh, roll up to the uh, charity overseas uh, uh, team and then uh, to the CEO. And then we have a build team role, which will also roll up to the, uh, you know, the charity overseas and CEO. Moving on to my data model. So we have, uh, uh, B2B and B2C data model. I would like to start from, uh, walk you through from the uh, left first, uh, starting from the lead object, wherein we'll cover the B2B scenario first, where, uh, where the lead will be captured uh, as part of the campaign and uh, by running marketing uh, campaigns, basically, and, uh, and in the marketing cloud. And then uh, as part of the journey builder, we will use advertising studio and different email studio to capture uh, the leads and then they will be synced in Salesforce as campaign member and lead records will be created for new prospects. However, existing contacts uh, will be, uh, you know, uh, existing contacts will also be captured as campaign member if you are targeting them. And then as part of the lead conversion, if it is a new prospect, we will create a uh, account and contact record, uh, account with record type corporate, uh, because it's a corporate donor and uh, their, their employees will be captured as contact. Uh, the OWD is private uh, due to certain sharing requirements. And uh, once, once the account and contact is created, we'll also create an opportunity, which uh, will also be uh, used to track the commitment made by that corporate donor as part of this, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, activity, uh, you know, fundraising activity. So this opportunity will be created. And then, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the same time, we will create a donation record as well and link the opportunity to that, uh, which, which will be, you know, uh, uh, which will be accessible by the customers. Uh, uh, will not give them access to opportunity because they are customer community, but they will access the donation. It's related to account by master detail uh, relationship uh, to the corporate account. So once the donation is captured, then we will link the donation uh, to the campaign via campaign donation junction object. It's a custom object um, with master detail relationship to donation as well as to campaign uh, so that we can track which donation is uh, you know, a tie to which campaign uh, from the and and business customer, corporate customer uh, co contribute to specific campaigns. They uh, reactive campaigns, basically, which we'll talk about. They don't uh, uh, contribute to any scheduled campaigns. Uh, so this is this is B two B. However, for B two C, uh, there there are street funders who will raisers who will use their uh, tablets and capture the donate uh, donate uh, you know individual uh, donors and they will be mapped as person account. And uh, again, we you know we'll uh, we'll create an opportunity uh, for them in the background uh, and the donate uh, will link them to the donation as well. The same process opportunity is created because we would like to measure the campaign influence via campaign influence by linking the uh, campaign influence to opportunity. So once the donation is created, then uh, also there is a process to uh, you know target donation to the project, like uh, contribute donation to a specific project, like a road building project. So project of custom object donates that. It is owned by build team, uh, which is a separate rule and uh, OWD will be private. And here uh, there is a process that we will invite quotes from different contractors. Now contractors are also mapped as person accounts. So we have two record types donors and con contractor and they will submit quotes to the project as and project quote custom object will capture that and once the quote is selected uh, contractor will be uh, mapped to the project as part of this lookup contractor field and then we have different pots which are basically the uh, you know the money pots that which 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 will check that how uh, uh, you know from which port the money is coming the lookup relationship is actually from project to port so i would like to correct that here and then uh, you know contractors can also raise invoices against different project uh, as part of their work so this invoice custom object related to project as well as to person account contractor donates that and then uh, payments are made against that which are captured outside the system and we can also expose them as external object of course there is a requirement to show donation history so donation history will be captured as an external object uh, once we archive the data to data warehouse and expose it via or data protocol uh, not talking about ldb um, uh, there are roughly 
five million donors and there can be duplicates as well so i'm so that's why i'm saying roughly five million donors and then uh, uh, you know there can be campaign donations to uh, like uh, three uh, uh, three campaigns maxed by the individual donors so roughly there can be 15 million campaign donor record so this is definitely an ldv and considering three year of data uh, it will be 45 million 15 into three so my short term strategy is to use custom indexes for selective query mostly use relationship fields if possible because they are indexed by default and use skinny tables on this object since it's a custom object and uh, because there is a reporting requirement uh, and you know to uh, show the donations uh, to do a campaign, which we'll talk about. My long-term strategy is to archive after the donation is uh, you know closed uh, or the campaign is closed. Either the donor unsubscribes or the campaign is closed to data warehouse and expose it via external object in donation history. Opportunity and donation. Again, uh, I'm assuming there are uh, there will be opportunity created for each donation, and since there are five million donors, roughly this will be uh, you know great greater than 5 million donor if there are more donations per donor. So in the three years, of course, this will be roughly 15 million uh, records. Again, my recommendation is to enable skinny tables on opportunity and donations uh, and custom index on the donation start and end date because there are requirements to filter out on that. Uh, my long-term strategy is to archive to data warehouse after one year. Uh, identity strategy. So we have AD as the identity store. ADFS will act as an IDP and Salesforce will act as an SP. And I'm recommending SP initiated single sign on flow, uh, which means user will try to access Salesforce. Salesforce will send a SAML request to ADFS. A user will authenticate with their AD credentials and then ADFS will send a SAML response, which will be signed with the digital certificate, which is already uploaded in Salesforce single sign on setting. And it will be used to validate the assertion and hence the trust will be established between these two systems. Of course, my domain is enabled by default on uh, these days on every new environment. Uh, now regarding the React Native mobile app, it will uh, will uh, authorize to Salesforce via auth 2.0 user agent uh, flow uh, layered with the SAML SP initi initiated single sign on flow. And we'll also use refresh token flow to uh, provide seamless uh, login experience to the user in case the, uh, the access token is expired. So that connect app policy can be a refresh token policy can be set to never expire and same goes for salesforce mobile app for fb and twitter we'll set them as auth providers apex reg handler with create and update method will be used to create or update the users third party account links can be provi provided to them especially to the users since we are migrating them to salesforce so they sh should be able to link their existing fb and twitter account using third party account link and authorization happen via oidc web server flow Moving on to my data migration strategy. So we have three data sources on the left, which is my extract phase and the middle is the load phase. And then uh, on the right, we have uh, middle is transform phase, sorry. And the uh, right side is load phase. So we have custom CRM, uh, which, which holds most of the donor, contractor, corporate donor data. Uh, so we'll, we'll use, we'll create, uh, we'll extract the account contact corresponding to these and create, and then create the external user because account and contact are required for that. And then we'll also uh, create the opportunity. But before that, that we'll upload the donation data. Uh, we uh, The data is also there in the Excel spreadsheet. So we'll use an Excel connector uh, to extract the data. And there are some office-based systems. So I'm assuming there is an office connector to extract the data. And also uh, we have MailChimp marketing cloud data. So I'm, I'm assuming that that campaign, uh, if there is an existing campaign running there, we'll, we'll have to move that to marketing cloud. But uh, if we need to also capture the track that in Salesforce, we'll also extract it from MailChimp. Then there are scripts the ETL layer, which will run and dedupe the data since they are duplicates, uh, uh, enrich the data, transform the data into Salesforce data model structure. And then we will do 100% load to a dev pro sandbox where we'll map, uh, validate the mapping and check the script sanity, then 100% load to a full copy sandbox for UAT and 100% load to full copy for performance testing. And here we will also gauge the deployment window. In order to enable the perf testing on a Salesforce full copy sandbox, we need to engage Salesforce support. And then we will also load 100% data to a production sandbox for go live. Uh, any uh, historical data which is not required in Salesforce uh, beyond three years uh, can be directly archived to data warehouse. 
Of course, we'll follow some data migration best practices. Uh, we'll use bulk API v2, and uh, then we'll also, uh, you, uh, in the parallel mode, we'll sequence the, uh, you know, the batches by the parent ID in order to avoid uh, uh, locking issues. Also, we have an opportunity, since this is the first go live, to relax the OWD um, so that, uh, you know, there are no sharing recalculations happening during the load, and then uh, we can enable the uh, you know, uh, OWD again, and then enable the automations, which we would have disabled before that. So moving on to my business requirements. So uh, the first one I have is uh, the fundraising uh, business process. So where we have the individual uh, uh, users, uh, which will be, uh, uh, you know, onboarded into Salesforce. So a street fundraiser will use a tablet to sign up for them for direct debit. So I'm assuming that there will be a screen flow, uh, which the, they will use via Salesforce mobile app uh, to uh, create the person account. And then there are custom fields for PII data. So we'll also set up the data classification for those as confidential. And as part of that, we'll also uh, create the individual object, which I, I forgot to include in my data model, but I am considering that in my business process, which will capture the personal uh, data of the, uh, uh, you know, provided by the customer uh, uh, for and their preferences for marketing. Then they will, uh, of course, mobile app supports both Android and iOS, so both the tablets will be uh, supported. And it is also necessary to capture marketing consent, so that's that's what I was referring to. So the screen flow will also create an individual record linked to the person account and store those attributes directly in, into the individual object. Uh, of course, we need to enable consent management in Salesforce to do that. Uh, then we need to provide an easy way for the donors to opt out. So uh, there will be a custom LW you see embedded in the account page to update the consent preferences, which will directly update the individual object. And that will be synced to marketing cloud as part of the data extensions. And those preferences will be used in the journey builder to uh, you know, stop the marketing if required. Then banking details needs to be captured as well for the debit. So this is our integration number one, where Salesforce is the source, ES and Canute application, which is the payment application, acts as the destination. Pattern, of course, is request and reply um, with enhanced external service, because we need to immediately know the result of uh, whether the payment was successful or not. However, we will not store the banking details information in Salesforce, since that is also one of the requirement and also due to PCI compliance. So the, so the, uh, the screen flow will directly invoke an enhanced external service. ESB will host that using Open, T, uh, Open API 2.0 schema and call the Canute application and give the result back to Salesforce. Uh, security, of course, this will be mutual TLS between uh, ESB and Salesforce for network security, name credential and principal will be set up uh, for the enhanced external service callout, and then auth 2.0 JWT flow will be used between ESB and Salesforce for uh, application layer authorization. Uh, then uh, once the payment is successful, uh, we'll create the uh, you know the donation uh, record in Salesforce, and then uh, uh, you know a corresponding opportunity will be created in the background. Uh, donor will be able to donate in their local currency and should be able to. So this will be will enable multi currency in in the Salesforce company information uh, setup, and then uh, corporate currency of course will be set up as USD. Donor will receive via email an invitation to donors area of the website. So there will be an after save trigger on the account the moment we'll sub complete the screen flow for onboarding and that will create uh, a community user uh, using a queuable latex interface to avoid mixed PML error and community welcome email uh, setting, uh, you know, by default, we'll send them an email to uh, welcome and reset the password. Update their person, uh, personal details. So uh, this will be a community uh, profile. Uh, this, uh, this is out of box feature. They can update their banking details. So there will be a quick action on their person account where they can go and update their banking details. And this will again call this integration 01 to to, uh, you know, in in a uh, but not in a, in the same fashion, but in a different fashion, uh, wherein it will just sync the banking attributes uh, again into the Canute application uh, without making any payment. Uh, cancel any scheduled donation. So this will be donation object. It's master detail to account, so they do have access uh, uh, as on their related list. And then they can, uh, there will be a status custom field and they can cancel 
uh, any donation. So on the donation object, there will be a logic, uh, you know, to create a link the opportunity, uh, but uh, also there will be a frequency field there, which will keep on creating, uh, you know, the next uh, donation if it is on a scheduled basis. So starting with, uh, you know, let's say if it is monthly, so there it will create a donation record uh, for, uh, uh, first for Jan month, you know, and then the, uh, there will be uh, another donation record, which will be for uh, Feb month. So that that's way, and if they can cancel it, then that schedule logic will not really run. A print a validated list of donation for any time frame. So for this one, I'm recommending an app exchange, Conga Composer mail merge functionality so that it can print the list of donations since these are customer community users. So I didn't consider standard report, which we can also download a two for printing. Uh, but here they will use Conga Composer and download the zip file and uh, PDF, and then they can print it. Moving on to the fundraising business process of corporate. So here we have the lead management process where the corporate team handle all the donations. So basically corporate uh, central team, uh, there will be a queue set up for them and they will act as the account owner. Uh, there is a website and email address where companies can contact. So we'll set up web to lead in Salesforce and we'll embed the HTML form on the community. Google recapture will be used to reduce any or avoid any spams. We'll have lead assignment rules set up in Salesforce and corporate team queues. So any lead will be assigned to the corporate team queue. And then for the emails, we'll use Apex email services and extract the details uh, using Apex uh, and then create the lead record in Salesforce and assign it to the same queue. The corporate team also approaches businesses using MailChimp at the moment. So they, they also purchase and use MailChimp, but now since we are replacing it with Marketing Cloud, uh, in order to avoid the duplications or any uh, ad address accuracy or phone or email accuracy, I'm recommending you use Experian QAS App Exchange, which uh, which validates the addresses, phone and email on uh, you know any lead record, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll use campaign and campaign member to mass import those leads via import wizard uh, using this purchase list, right? So first we will import those, then we will run the QS app exchange to validate the data, and then then we will uh, use the marketing cloud marketing cloud connect to sync those campaigns and uh, start uh, put those in journey. Uh, the RFV team will uh, using the journey builders. The RFV team will discuss the donation aims and goals for the company. So, um, so here uh, the team will reach out to the company uh, primary contact, use uh, discuss their goals, capture those uh, via quick action stream flow, and then use. Uh, the uh, standard con uh, lead convert to business account contact and opportunity. Since they will be using the uh, screen flow, uh, we'll have to use invocable Apex to do that. And then there will be an after save trigger um, to on the account uh, to create a DocuSign envelope and send for signature using Apex DocuSign toolkit because this should happen in, in an uh, you know automated fashion to accelerate the process. Uh, of course, uh, I uh, uh, in in this case once the signature they sign the contract uh, there will be they will be uh, you know they will be provided access to the community and that i'm assuming that you know it can be done either in an automated fashion or uh, you know the corporate team can do that uh, there is a page on the public website that lists all the corporate donors uh, and uh, their logos so we'll have a url field for the logo of the company which will capture that and formula field to display that in salesforce but uh, we'll um, also have an opt-out checkbox on the account uh, where companies uh, contacts can update it and they can opt out from displaying their logos on the website. And then uh, in order to display the uh, the donors on the website, th there will be an integration between sales Salesforce and website via ESB, wherein we'll use the fire and forget a platform event uh, using platform event, uh, where an after save flow on the donation record or after save trigger on the account will publish a platform event. And ESP will subscribe, uh, do a remote call in to get the data from Salesforce and send to website. Of course, we'll use one way TLS here or due to platform event limitation for network security. Once the, uh, and then send the details to website. And I'm assuming that on the website, there will be a component which will be developed to uh, pro uh, receive this data and show that. Um, you know, as per the required format, then corporate donation always make donations towards pro specific projects. So this will be marketing cloud data extension. Um, 
and uh, here we'll use journey builder uh, and using the email studio uh, so projects will be synced as part of data extension to marketing cloud uh, using mcc journey builder using email studio will send them updates because there are lots of customers um, uh, here so i'm not assuming any uh, salesforce email functionality uh, then the fundraising process will start with the uh, where the RFE will do receive donation from many states where individuals leave money to them as part of the bill. So there will be another record type on the business account, which is estates, and their con relatives are marked as contact, and we'll use Conga Composer to draft those emails and uh, for personalized letter and email to those contacts uh, because it's it can be in multi-language, so Conga Composer supports that. Then the next one is campaign. So RFE runs two types of campaigns on a regular basis. Uh, one is scheduled campaign, and another one is reactive campaign so we'll use marketing cloud journey builder with email mobile studio and we'll also set up a global subscription preference center there uh, whose setting will be updated based upon the individual object uh, preferences and salesforce this uh, the second uh, reactive campaign which are generally in response to some events like earthquake uh, so there we need to track the donation on the campaigns uh, for exclusively for uh, on, on a particular project so we'll create a project in salesforce to rebuild the road for example uh, once the earthquake happens and we will link that project uh, to the campaign via this lookup which we have and then um, and then we have the campaign donation junction object also between donation and campaign, which tracks a specific donation to a specific campaign. Donors can al also opt out of reactive campaign. So we'll use the subscription preference center of Marketing Cloud. Corporate donor will, will be targeted as a part of reactive campaign, but not scheduled. I've already covered that. And in Marketing Cloud, we'll use audience segmentation uh, to segment the audience so that donors are not included in the scheduled uh, type of campaigns. They're also always part of uh, reactive campaigns. Campaigns are run on multiple channels and are if I would like to track. So here I'm assuming that this is about the campaign analytics. So we'll use Marketing Cloud Advertisement Studio and for, for running campaigns uh, uh, for my, on multiple channels like Facebook ads or, or on the Google sponsored Google result. And then we'll use Google 360 Analytics and Data Roma to uh, track the campaign uh, effectiveness. Then next one is that donors will be only in a maximum three scheduled uh, campaign. So there will be an after sale flow on the campaign member to increment the scheduled campaign count field on person account by one. Uh, uh, you know, whenever a campaign member uh, is included, uh, that person account is captured. And then there will be a before save flow plus a validation rule on the campaign member record to block that person account if we try to add it. We, we need to use validation rule with before save flow because uh, that flow doesn't throw the error itself. It, it, is, it works in a combination. Uh, for the project planning, we'll create pots, uh, which are regional uh, money pots. Uh, you know, so we have a custom object for that with year and budget fields. I'm assuming, uh, you know, an admin will create that. And uh, then and when uh, there will be a lookup created on the project. So when the projects are created by the build team, uh, the you know a pot can be selected to to you know identify the source for that uh, funding for the project, and it will be owned by the build team. So uh, again, uh, we can provide a quick action screen flow, uh, you know, em embedded in a VF page and exposes at a tab wherein uh, you know the team can create the project. Uh, for better user experience. Uh, government and NGOs can approach F RFE for assistance using a web form. So this will be web two case functionality. Uh, I'm assuming it is well within the limits of 5,000 cases per day. So we can use that. And this form will be exposed on the website. Our most RFE contact a local authority for permission. So there will be a permission custom field on the project uh, where it will be marked a checkbox, which, uh, and this permission will be sought outside Salesforce offline. And and then uh, once it is there, that can be marked on the project. The local contractor uh, uh, will be mapped, created as person account in Salesforce, uh, onboarded as the onboarding process, of course, is not clear. But once they are onboarded, uh, they need to sign the doc, uh, contract. So there will be a send with doc sign button on the uh, person account, which can be automated as well if required. And their contract will be saved as files on the person account of the contractor. Each project has a minimum number of quotations. So we have a custom metadata, which will have the minimum quotation value per country. 
and then there will be an after save flow on the project which will uh, read this custom metadata and capture that value on the project depending on the country in which the project is being executed and uh, and when the project codes are created by the person account for the project using a quick action lwc uh, in the without sharing mode uh, because the project is private so i'm opening up the visi visibility via apex without sharing they will be able uh, to create project codes by selecting a project and then uh, there will be a uh, we'll use a before save flow plus validation rule to block the project status uh, fr from changing to start if the minimum codes are not created under the project um, then of course uh, RFE will look at how many projects uh, uh, how uh, the, the contractors have worked in in the last three years. So we have a quick action LWC on the project to show quotes and related project count. Now contractor will sign a contract at this time, so there will be an LWC uh, on the uh, quick, uh, quick action LWC to select the uh, quote and update the contract lookup on the project so which whichever is you know so if there are multiple contractors uh, there will be an lwc uh, which will be used to select one of the code and also have will have the logic to populate this contractor lookup on the project which will be the assigned contractor to that project and then there will be an after save flow on the project with invocable apex uh, for uh, for sending that uh, contract via docusign automatically moving on to build process so rfi would also like to update uh, you know uh, have, have uh, invoice management process basically and uh, they would like to update and take advice how to best complete this so there will be quick action screen flow on the project uh, record um, to to create the invoice record again uh, you know um, this this can be actually a quick action lwc because they they will have access via uh, in the without sharing mode so they can use an lwc to create an inv invoice record and once the invoice record is created there will be before save flow to update a checkbox on the invoice uh, which will check if the uh, invoice is greater than 10% of the quoted amount on the pro project quote which was selected for that contractor. And if yes, that checkbox will be checked, which indicates the regional manager that it needs regional manager approval. And then there will be an after save flow, which will submit it for approval. And two step standard approval process is there with the second step will be conditional based upon this checkbox. Payment to contractors are made from Canute. So we have an integration number three where Salesforce source act as source and Canute is destination. And we have fire and forget uh, uh, platform event pattern where uh, after save flow on the invoice approval status change will publish a platform event. ESB will do an RCI into Salesforce remote calling, get the details of invoice and send to Canute. Uh, there will be a project manager on the site who will tra track the photos and so we will we'll are uh, providing react native mobile app so that it can work on both platforms and project files can be uploaded as photos uh, using the um, mobile app components uh, wherein they can link it as files to uh, project then any permit required need to be stored in salesforce and pm will need to be able to access them so this will be stored as project files uh, so and pm will be able to access the project any uh, photos taken needs a GPS and date time information. So I'm assuming, and that needs to be stored as metadata. So I'm assuming these are you know advanced camera functions which hybrid or the mobile publisher or, or Salesforce mobile app will not be able to support. So hence I'm recommending React Native mobile app. Donor should be able to see the progress of any project. So uh, this will be uh, LWC without sharing so that donor can see all any project in the without sharing mode. When fundraisers were carried, uh, clear audit of donation is required. So there will be a project with donation and invoice report, uh, which can provide all the details about project uh, or, you know, source uh, fund sourcing. Uh, general donation can be used for any project. So they, so this, uh, you know, general donation of course won't be linked to any project. Data migration we have already covered, visibility and security. So they have uh, the street fundraiser only able to create records. So they have no visibility to any record in the system. Uh, so street fundraiser will have a profile which will have only create access on the account. So they will and the individual so that they can just create it, but they won't have read access. So, you know, they won't be able to see that afterwards. Uh, fundraiser admin should be able to see all donors and donation for their country. So there will be a criteria based sharing rule on person account with criteria on record type donor and country, and it will provide read only access uh, to them. 
donation of course is controlled by parent uh, the vps of the fund admin should be able to see all donors and for their region so fund admins uh, roll up to fund admin vp so this will enable role hierarchy uh, fund admin should be able to create and manage campaign so fund administrator will be the campaign owner and they they have marketing user flag check so they will be able to do that uh, there are some celebrity donors and their personal details should only be visible to fundraising admin so on the in individual object which will be in the private sharing mode we will have a they will have profile access but there will be a field as well which will also capture the type as a high value donor or celebrity and based upon that there will be criteria based sharing rule which will only share those to uh, that to uh, the fund admins uh, then corporate donors and donation should be only visible to member of the corporate team who handle the account so account owner is private donation is controlled by parent and then we'll add the corporate team to the account team and uh, uh, hence they will get access ports are allocated on annual basis should be only visible to regional vp so vp profile will have read access to them and uh, since it is regional based i am also uh, creating a criteria based sharing rule on port region to share it the, with the vp regional rule donor should be able to view a history of their donation so they will have list view on their donation object and then donation history external object as well which is exposed by our data protocol the build team can view project and idea for their own region so there will be a criteria based sharing rule on the project uh, with criteria as region and will be shared with the build team role pm should only be able to view project they have been assigned so pm uh, there will be look up on the project for assigned pm so i'm uh, that's why i'm recommending since this is a dynamic sharing so apex manning sharing on the project uh, with the custom row cores will be created to share it with pm yeah. Contractor should be able to submit and view quotation and invoices. So there will be uh, there are lookup to quotes as well as invoices from the person account. So they should be able to use sharing sets uh, to uh, see those. All users should be able to use the system in their local language. So this is multi-language. Uh, reporting requirement: VP need to be able to see campaign effectiveness. So this will be a Salesforce custom report type uh, campaign with campaign influence, uh, so that VP can see that. It must be possible to trace donation for reactive campaigns to specific project. So there will be campaign with campaign donation uh, and uh, don uh, donation with project. Uh, these two reports uh, which will be used uh, and uh, since this can be a very large data volume so tableau crm dashboard will be provided uh, vp needs to see a report of contractors whose invoices are 10 percent greater than quotes and three times in the last 12 months so there will be daily batch apex to check the checkbox on the person account if there are invoices are greater than this and then standard account rep report with record type filter on contractor and flag uh, this flag set to true time filter 12 months top individual fundraisers are eligible for recognition and the rfi would like to uh, see them so since uh, this can be uh, you know uh, in uh, this this needs to be in each country in every quarter and there are like millions of donors so uh, considering the ldb i'm also recommending tableau crm dashboard based upon the person account donors um, which will or uh, and it will also include the corporate donors because uh, no this is individual donors only person account uh, will be used uh, moving on to project requirements so there are certain risks which i have identified no in-house dev team uh, currently and this is a technical type of risk because uh, th there are suppliers which are being engaged to do the development so we'll have to mitigate this by defining standards and we we need to also hire sfdc architects and release manager set up the release management process and coding standards and then set up the coe and bring supplier in the governance preview canute is highly integrated uh, system and uh, this is a program type of risk because uh, it can have impact on the release timeline so so I, I'm recommending to create a blue printing phase uh, in the waterfall mode uh, to define the design of the integrations and then align the release cadence with the Canute uh, development team uh, for integration testing and use mock interfaces for dev and QA testing uh, once when the integrations are not ready. Timelines, uh, the project need to be ready in six months. Uh, since this is a complex project, I'm recommending to define an MVP phase and go live with the MVP for the first six months. Prioritize the requirement using the change control board. 
react native mobile app development again you know we need to there is no in house team so we need to onboard a mobile dev contractor in the beginning uh, to do the development integration resources since we are replacing azure with the mulesoft we need to probably hire mulesoft integration resources or contractor to support that my governance uh, recommendation is to you uh, establish a centralized coe include business uh, stakeholders like change management product owner and then i uh, use uh, a training sf and uh, champions and use it uh, stakeholders like technical architects and include them in the governance also include the supplier and the contractor in the governance and i, I have a strong pmo to coordinate between these team uh, set up earb to define enterprise standards and then uh, you know uh, coding standards my dev methodology is hybrid agile blueprint phase for mvp waterfall and then uh, uh, dev will happen in agile sprints integration will happen in waterfall testing methodology uh, unit testing so this is my governance uh, sorry uh, slide uh, uh, the environment strategy so i'm recommending to have uh, in functional and integration testing as a sit stage and automatic reaction at uat stage and performance testing at a staging uh, uh, sandbox and of course uh, here we will have the apex code coverage and sonar queue check uh, so uh, with this, I would like to conclude my uh, presentation uh, since I'm right on time. I will take your questions now. Thank you. Shall we go right into questioning or um, uh, I'm, I'm normally we, we take, yeah? You guys want to discuss something so I can probably go out for five minutes. Otherwise I'm good. Yeah, if you can come back on top of the hour, we, we, we would perhaps, uh, it's so many judges today, so it's maybe good to prioritize okay. the, the questioning. All right, so <laughs> shall I come? All right. Yeah. Who wants to go first? I can it's go. Be data model. <laughs> I can go. Um, Mohit, can you go on your data model? Sure. Um, Explain us how you calculate the campaign influence, um, especially considering the B2C customers. Yeah, so the, uh, so I'm recommending a primary uh, default uh, campaign influence model. Uh, so, um, so there will be an auto association based upon the contact rules, which I'm not showing here in my data model, but this person uh, account or the contact of the business account uh, will be linked to the opportunity as a contact role. So there will be an auto association. So how that works with the community user? What's your licensing choice on that one? Because especially with, the B2C, especially with the B2C customers, so you are making them the part of the opportunity, right? As a opportunity roles, is that right? Mm -hmm. So how how the security and visibility works and what's your licensing choice on the individuals? Uh, yeah, so as of now, I'm considering uh, the person account as a customer community, but yes, yes. I think if I have to uh, link them as contact roles on the opportunity, uh, that would not work. So I, I take back my strategy, uh, you know, then, then I would create the campaign influence records uh, uh, once the opportunity is created, uh, you know, not via auto association, but by using the triggers. Sorry, um, hard to, for me, hard to understand how the campaign influence works for the uh, B2C. Yeah, so uh, I think for B, uh, it, uh, from the B2C perspective, right, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we'll create an opportunity. Uh, of course, B2C users will not have access to that, uh, but for their corresponding donation, we will have an opportunity. And then the trigger uh, or any process automation will, uh, will capture the cap primary campaign field, which is linked to that donation uh, on the opportunity. Do, and then, do, you, do you think mm -hmm. you can do that? with customer community license, even with the automation? Because we, we are not linking those person account to the opportunity contact rules, right? It is okay. just about uh, capturing the opportunity and the campaign uh, relationship in the backend. 
and how you kept uh, if a person is making a donations how how you capture it it, it is related to which company yeah so uh, when uh, when the donation will be created right so uh, the uh, this the person account uh, the donors they can contribute uh, to the scheduled campaign right like different campaigns so we'll uh, will when we will create the donation record uh, we'll also uh, you know uh, create a campaign donation record uh, as part of that right so donation and campaign donation has a link uh, junction between them and once the campaign donation is created uh, what i'll do is um, i will also uh, on the opportunity which is linked to that donation which is created in the background for every donation made to that i'll do two things one i will continue to accumulate the amount on the opportunity so that it's captured in my you know influence and then second thing is that i will link the you know the parent uh, opportunity to the uh, campaign as well by creating a campaign influence junction object so b2c user don't have to access opportunity or campaign influence in any way so can you explain us how are you using the opportunities for all the use cases b2b yes. as well as b2c or yes so for b2b uh, you know the uh, i'll explain b2b so we'll uh, once the lead is converted uh, based upon their commitment for that year we will create an opportunity uh, in in certain stage it should not be closed one because we need to have a campaign influence on that which doesn't work with closed one and uh, the moment an opportunity is created uh, we'll also create a donation record uh, for that particular user which will be the like the master donation record for that user and it will be linked to that opportunity via this lookup now since the b2b users only contribute to specific targeted campaigns uh, then they will uh, they will will start will also capture the campaign uh, details like in which campaign they are contributing and by the campaign donation object which will be linked to that campaign this junction however they can contribute to different campaigns so there will be different campaign donation object uh, so this will be a master to m2m -M -M relationship and this is how we will uh, uh, you know link the opportunity to campaign influence and donations to the campaign so you are creating custom object to yes. campaign campaign donation to to capture the junction of your right between donation and campaign to, to yes. know yes. which donation and relate to which campaign that is yeah. for what for reporting purposes right so why are you still creating opportunities in b2c scenario so i am creating opportunity in b2c scenario because my understanding is that uh we will have to also we'll have to capture the vps need to know the campaign effectiveness uh, of all the campaigns uh, respective of whether those are reactive campaigns or scheduled campaigns so uh, in the cases where the donations are made by individuals we still need to measure the influence of that campaign based on those donations okay so you you have campaign donation for reporting purposes and then you are duplicating the information on campaign influence for uh, reporting completeness oh uh, yes because uh, uh, the campaign influence gives me uh, yeah i think uh, in that case uh, the campaign donation is primarily for uh, capturing the donations made made by b2b uh, customers right because uh, they they will be uh, because they contribute to a specific campaign and that that needs to be tracked however this campaign influences will be used to capture the overall influence where the b2c uh, customers will also come into picture right and then in your reporting reports you mentioned you will be also using double crm for this yes yes so yeah, I, I got a little bit confused because you mentioned the uh, the, the standard report uh, or custom report types on those objects, and then you mentioned double CRM in your business requirement. Mm -hmm. Which one? So, was yeah, towards the end, uh, there was the campaign with campaign donation. Yeah. But then underneath you have double CRM dashboard. So when it reads campaign with campaign donation that looks like a report no, so right? so the wcrm dashboard is the tool which i am using and the other 
uh, you know, campaign with campaign donation and donation with project. These are the data sets, uh, you know, which I'll be using to build my dashboard. So I'm explaining the data sets there. Not, these will not be the standard reports. Got you. Okay. So given that you are bringing all your reporting data for the influence into Tableau, mm -hmm. or do you still need the, the same data model as you outlined with the opportunity to see another thing? Yeah, I mean, we can, uh, if, if it is uh, just about, uh, so my, my understanding is that VPs need to see only the campaign effectiveness, right, which is requirement number first. So if we have a campaign with campaign influence, they will be able to do that in totality. Uh, and then for donations, specifically to trace donations of the reactive campaigns and corporate donations, uh, since it can be a large data volume, you know, uh, for donations, uh, specifically tracking, we need to bring in Tableau CRM dashboard. So that's that's how, because here the data volume will be less, so they can capture the uh, influence without any tracking any donations. Okay. Uh, let's see somebody else ask. Yeah, can you please walk me through the process of the creation of the donation creation with the child object campaign donation? Yes. So uh, there will be a quick action screen flow on the account record um, of the. So let's say if we are talking about B two uh, here in this case we are talking about B two B. So there will be a quick action screen flow where we will first ask the user right like their commitment uh, for uh, for this particular year and for a specific campaign if let's say there was an earthquake or so and then that will be captured as a donation record and then in the uh, there will be an after save flow on that uh, donation record once it's cre created to create a junction child uh, object which is campaign donation and link to the campaign which would have been selected uh, you know, while creating the donation. Uh, so this is the process where internal users um, create the donation. Yes. Internal users are creating it and then, uh, you know, uh, while the onboarding process. And then after that, uh, we will also provide them uh, uh, a quick action LWC, uh, wherein they can sign up for more donations. Like if they would like to, you know, contribute to an earthquake uh, which has happened and new road building project has started. So there will be a quick action LWC wherein they can also, you know, look at the various projects running and then the campaigns and then also create a donation record. Okay, thank you. Um, but I'm assuming you're, you're finished with your line of questions. I thought you had to say something. No, no, that's good. Thank you. Um, so one, one question here again on the data model. Uh, I think you, you mentioned in your requirements the usage of web to case. Where does yes. where does the case fit in in the, the data? Model? Oh, okay, yeah, I uh, so there was a requirement yes, wherein they they can actually raise a case uh, using web to case. Uh, I actually uh, didn't include that in my data model. I should have included that. Yes, but we do have a, a case as well in the picture to uh, for for the government and NGO support. Who will okay. own the case? So uh, let me go to, so there will be, so which teams, uh, let me check the requirement really quick. Uh, flying wet. Yeah, so, uh, so here, uh, this is not mentioned, uh, you know, as part of the business process, who is going to own the case, uh, however, um, I'm, I'm assuming that there will be an internal queue uh, with a certain set of users, region-based again, because there can be a local, uh, you know, NGO which can contact them, and then that team will reassign it further. And so, what what's that team? Are they uh, where do they sit in the actors and licenses? Uh, so here. Uh, I mean, as part of the business process, they can they have just mentioned RFP for assistance uh, using that. But I'm assuming that yeah, since the projects are built by a build team, uh, yeah, it can be build team as well, which can support from 
assistance so that uh, you know but build team has a platform starter license so then there is a license implication because then they cannot access cases so i will have to change that to uh, uh, you know uh, service cloud as well to support the cases uh, uh, support process if that's the case okay thank you um there is a requirement that um, contractors should be paid directly from Canute. How does Canute know where to transfer the funds to? Okay, so I'm assuming that uh, you know, like we onboard the donors, uh, they the when the contractor onboarding happens, uh, they would also provide their banking account details, uh, which will be. Again, using a similar integration that we use for donor that will be set up in the Canute. And then once the invoice will be generated by the contractors uh, and uh, we will send the invoice details to Canute um, uh, with the contractor details, Canute should be able to make so the payment. How do you link the uh, data in Salesforce and the payment details in Canute? Uh, so uh, there will be, I'm assuming that once the uh, payment details are set up uh, in Canute, there will be an external ID, uh, which will be, uh, you know, captured. So it uh, I either there is no, uh, you know, mention that this Canute, since it's a homegrown application, there are two options. Uh, one, we can get a payment token, which the Canute application can return, and we can capture that on the account and store that in an encrypted field. Or we there can be an ID, a unique ID, like a payer ID, which can be captured on the contract record. And so that link from them. a UX perspective, what would you recommend? From a UX perspective, uh, in, in any case, I don't think, uh, you know, from a user experience point of view, we should disclose that uh, information on the UI. So it will be in any case a hidden field, uh, encrypted field. Uh, but yeah, uh, my recommendation, if if at all, the Canute app can provide a payment token, uh, that will be good because uh, in, in that case, yeah, um, if, uh, you know, that payment token can be used for automated payments as well in future. So assume they have like five payment method. And mm -hmm. if you are just giving them the token information, how from a user point of view, how would I know which credit card is linked with which token? Yeah. So if, if there are multiple payment methods, I didn't assume that. So since this scenario only talks about providing banking details, so I'm assuming they will always capture one bank account. But if we have multiple payment methods, then we'll have to introduce another custom object payment methods under the person account so that we can capture the methods and the related token on those. Um also regarding your data model um mm -hmm. so i think you are you are assuming that contractors are um, individual persons or yes. single single person companies so i guess that's not realistic in infrastructure projects um mm -hmm. it's more like a really a company um what effects does that have or would that have on your data model well, in, in that case, I will have to map those as business accounts uh, with uh, another record type contractor on the account and con uh, their employees can uh, be the, uh, you know, the contact. And, but yeah, from the licenses perspective, I still don't uh, see any impact there. What's about the security? From the security of... I think it's uh, it will still fit in the same security data model because uh, there, there is uh, the person accounts are private as well. Of course, you know the OWD of an account is private, so it will stay same. The only difference would be that in in this case, uh, where the lookup is with the person account, it will be mapped to the account, and then. We'll have to use the sharing sets uh, for to open up the visibility of quotes and invoices based upon the account uh, lookup uh, of the project. And how you open the security? 
uh, via sharing set. So uh, we'll use the sharing set, which says user dot account equals uh, project quote dot account, and then same for invoice. Can I ask another question or? Okay, uh, so the street fundraiser, um, can you uh, sh show us uh, who are they reporting to uh, on the role hierarchy? Yeah, fundraisers. Yeah, so fundraisers are rolling up to VPs uh, of the region. To the VPs? Yeah. Not the admins underneath the country. So you're talking about fundraiser admins? Street fundraisers. Oh, okay. Street fundraisers. Uh, street fundraisers, I didn't consider really a role for them, uh, to, you know, to be used in the role hierarchy because at the end of the day, we are opening up the visibility via sharing rules and they don't have any requirement to see any records. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so explain please uh, the whole process again, uh, when they capture the, the donors, how that works, mm -hmm. uh, what, what sort of records uh, get created? Sure. Who is it assigned to? Sure. All right, so uh, for the donors, uh, they will use a tablet uh, street fundraisers and they will create a person account record using a quick action screen flow. But along with the person account, they will capture some personal details, uh, PII information, uh, which will be captured on the individual uh, record, which is part of the consent management. And it will be linked to the person account. I should have actually included that here. And we'll also add some custom fields to the individual object. Uh, the OWD of that would be private. And uh, the ownership, of course, will stay with the uh, street fund raisers. And because we are opening up the visibility via different sharing mechanisms. Uh, yeah. And then uh, for the banking information, of course, we are not capturing it in Salesforce. It will be just submitted to Canute via RNR pattern. So the street fundraiser, they will own the person account uh, long term, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we, we can assign them to, you know, some other internal users as well post the creation, but uh, based upon the visibility requirements I've seen, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, the person account needs to be owned by some internal user, but Anyways, we are opening up the visibility via different sharing rules. Mm -hmm. Can we um can we talk move on to the system landscape? So, yeah. Um so I, ha I have a few questions here on specifically on the, on the mobile app and the, and the strategy that you're talking about there. So, um, well, can, can you talk me through your, your mobile app strategy for this, uh, this custom mobile app that you've got here? Yes. So, so there is a requirement to, for the PMs to go to the project site, for example, road building site and, you know, access few details, capture few details there, and there can be, uh, you know, a network shortage there or, you know, no network. So uh, offline is of paramount importance in this scenario. And th that's why I did consider hybrid mobile app, considering it's better offline capability or native. But then there is another requirement to capture photos with their GPS and date time metadata, which I assume, you know, would be probably difficult for a hybrid mobile app using Cordova plugin to access. So hence I considered React native considering PMs can have both uh, iPhones or Android-based uh, phones. But for street fundraisers, I didn't see any you know, glaring offline requirements. And considering that we have to go live in six months, I don't really want to build those features as part of native mobile app to reduce the dev effort. So they can just use the standard SF mobile app and capture the donors. 
Okay, that, that's, that's to that, thank you. Um, so if I would um, say that these advanced features you were talking about, so the GPS thing and the date of time, that this is actually functionality of of the mobile device or the camera app. Um, how, yes. would that, how would that um, influence your choice of mobile of the mobile strategy? Yeah, if if those are uh, you know part of the camera app and hybrid mobile app uh, using Cordova plugin can you know use uh, access those and capture that as metadata and you know enable those features. I think. Uh, then in that case, I would go for a hybrid mobile app, still considering the offline requirements for PNs, uh, wherein we can use a uh, smart sync DB of the uh, provided by mobile SDK for better offline management. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to ask about uh, if you estimated the file storage uh, that you have and that would be required. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what's the question? About file storage. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, yeah. So uh, there, there was no uh, data mentioned, like how many, you know, what's the size of the various files which they would like to capture in Salesforce. So. I, I just assume that we should be able to, uh, you know, uh, support that using Salesforce files, considering every unlimited license provides two GB of, uh, yeah, file storage uh, per a user uh, license, and then we should be um, able to buy more storage if required. So you are not uh, expecting any archiving. For the files, uh, not at the moment, but uh, because at least considering that first six months uh, of the project MVP phase, I'm not uh, you know, planning to bring in any new system for file archival, assuming, and if at all it's required, I will go for more data storage. And after six months of MVP, I will definitely do an architectural assessment and see if it's bringing in uh, you know, some other file archival tool like Box makes sense. And uh, that would need an assessment, uh, which I would like to do after six months. So you mentioned MVP, uh, would you be able to describe what uh, do you propose to include in, in the first phase? Yeah, so in the first phase, uh, definitely I would like to uh, cover most of the priority business requirements. So I will still uh, discuss with the change control board uh, consisting of key business stakeholders and uh, of course, depending on the vision of the my steering committee, um, the, the, all the uh, C, you know, C-level execs uh, will discuss and see if uh, we, we can prioritize few things. Uh, but uh, from the business requirement perspective, however, from the infrastructure uh, landscape perspective, I am planning to implement marketing cloud because that's like the real, uh, you know, uh, key factor of this program. Uh, reporting uh, since in the six months, first six months, there will be not be much data. I'm assuming, you know, which uh, if that can be still manageable, you know, Tableau CRM can be avoided in the first six months, depending upon the data assessments, uh, estimates. Uh, but the rest of, uh, uh, for the mobile app, I'll see if hybrid mobile app can support it uh, for, uh, you know, faster development, uh, or if the Salesforce mobile app offline features can still you know, provide most of the functionality and photo metadata a capture thing can be deprioritized. And then later on, we can build that. Thank you. Uh, do you mind jumping to the LDV mitigation? Yes. Yeah. So I I have a, a couple of questions here. So the you mentioned here using skinny tables. Is there any trade offs that that you can think of uh, in introducing those? Yes, definitely there are trade offs. Uh, the writes will be slower. Uh, uh, of course, you know it will enable faster read, but slower writes. 
to the database. Okay. And does that have any impact on, uh, I know you, you show maybe a couple of slides later than this, your um, environment strategy. Is it going to impact that in any way? Well, uh, yeah, in, in a way, I think it, uh, it will impact, uh, you know, it, for the different environments, we'll have to replicate the skinny table and then measure the performance, uh, considering skinny tables are active. Uh, skinny tables are replicated to full copy sandbox. So for the staging sandbox and UAT, we are good. However, for SIT and DevPro, if we need to uh, factor in the performance overhead of the skinny table, we'll also have to raise a support ticket to replicate those into these lower sandboxes. Okay. You and also, somewhat, sorry, go ahead. Uh, you also mentioned about custom index. Do we have to worry about anything on the custom index? Custom indexes, uh, well, uh, you mean worry from the performance perspective? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think um, the only only uh, thing is that when we create the, uh, the uh, of course we need to open up a ticket uh, with the uh, Salesforce to enable custom index unless and until we can make it an external ID and indexing process also, uh, you know, it, it will again uh, lead to faster write, uh, but uh, you know, for the uh, faster reads, but writes uh, will be impacted to a certain extent as well. And, so and how will you know which uh, either because you have custom index, you have skinny tables. Mm -hmm. so what is your final recommendation? So do we have to create it or not? No. So for custom indexes, uh, I think we have a way to enable, uh, you know, by marking it as an external ID uh, for a certain field. If that field is external ID markable, depending upon that, for example, I don't think we can mark checkboxes as external ID. So that, that will be a challenge, but for the fields, which I'm considering, I think I can mark those as external IDs. Uh, I think there are some date fields wherein I will have to create a custom index uh, request that. But uh, apart from that, I can consider external ID. First, I will consider that skinny table is my last resort. Uh, you know, if the indexes are not really helping in the performance. Based upon the selected threshold. Yeah. How about standard indexes? Standard indexes, of course, you know, uh, the most of the lookup uh, relationships or master detail are indexed by default, right? Like, so, and even the uh, custom relationships as well. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to rec type, for example, is another in, uh, standard index based uh, attribute. So I would like to use that. They provide more uh, selectivity threshold, uh, like, 30% for the first million and 15% for the rest uh, up to 1 million records. So uh, wherever possible, I'll try to use standard index, but uh, there are certain date fields which I'm introducing on custom objects um, like donation, start date and end date, where there I need to consider custom indexes. Um, so here in your environment strategy, you have two full copy sandboxes. So what's your rationale for this? as they are yes, quite expensive. So, yes, that's expensive. But um, uh, since uh, I'm uh, you know, going live in six months, first time into say a new Salesforce org, I'll have to do a full 100% data migration. And I would need a full copy staging sandbox to load that data uh, and then also measure the performance. So that's why, and also for the data migration, purpose to, you know, so that UAT can happen on the full data set. Uh, I'm recommending a full copy for UAT. However, after first year, after the initial go live, uh, once the system uh, is, is running for one year, after that contract, uh, I can, after 12 months, can reduce the UAT one to a partial copy because um, that, then I wouldn't won't need another full data migration. Okay. So all of the use cases you mentioned, is it not achievable on one sandbox? Uh, it is not achievable on one sandbox because uh, uh, what I'm recommending is that uh, on the UAT uh, full copy sandbox, um, I will do the UAT, uh, the full UAT on full data load. I'll also run the automated regression using Selenium and using Crowbar for 
integration regression uh, and then uh, i'll move it uh, you know once the i get a uat sign off i will move it to a new staging sandbox to gauge the deployment time and, and during the uat my focus will be on running the uat scripts but the, at the staging i would like to do a fresh deployment see how much time it takes uh, to to deploy the data on the production and that's how i will define the cutover period of my deployment and that also gives me an opportunity to run load runner on on a separate sandbox to, just for power testing but in your migration you are already migrating 100% of your data to to uat and then you do that yes. again what yeah. is the advantage of doing it twice it's just going to slow you down isn't it no so the advantage is that um, just before the go live i will be able to gauge the deployment window because on uat i will have to deploy many times uh, you know depending upon if there are uat bug fixes happening you know as part of the regression or you know in general there is a uat issue reported so i'll have to again do multiple deployments there can be 100% of the load again if the you uh, there is a big prior one uat issue and the data structure is not right or can be smaller bug fixes which i'll fix on and deploy on uat but then i would need a clean sandbox wherein i'll just uh, you know deploy the fresh data set including all the uat bug fixes um, and and measure my deployment time but for that you don't need a full copy sandbox for staging i would need that because um, I, it is my 100% data load so if i don't load 100% data uh, how will i know how much uh, time it will require to load that into production and then how will i define my cutover window but i think I, i guess you could separate the functionality so use for deployment issues you could use some other kind of sandbox but for migration use the full copy sandbox yes that that's right so this is my initial strategy uh, you know when because i'm going live with salesforce including data migration right and uh, for migration i need a uat full copy and staging however after that after migration i don't need a full copy uat so mm -hmm. but i cannot reduce the contract uh, you know mm -hmm. i have to stay, stick with it for 12 months so Since after 12 months i do that since you are on a greenfield has a greenfield approach you could even use production for migration tests oh uh, production for migration testing uh let me think about that uh but how will i refresh the production uh data you will, you will you will delete the data yeah but uh, considering the the volume of my data i still think that you know i shouldn't touch my production and you know then delete the data so let's say if my data structure is not working uh, in production uh, because on the production i'll also have to do some uh, uh, metadata deployment first right to create the objects and everything and then load the data so it has to be sequenced so i i need to measure that as part of my cutover activity okay so so again full copy sandbox is very expensive so even for one year it's quite yes it is expensive uh, i mean uh, this we can discuss with business as well if the business oh, okay. stakeholders are mm -hmm. okay um one last question because i think we are running out of time or we are already over the time very stupid oh we are okay um uh fundraiser one fundraising section one um, requirement number requirement h you want to send out a, a mail um we what kind of mail are you sending out here is it uh, the st standard welcome mail or is it yes this would be the standard welcome email uh, however we'll use the vf email template uh, so that uh, donor receive that uh, in in their local language okay can you think of any uh, declarative solution for that over uh, so, for his email declarative solution uh, you mean uh, apart from using vf email template mm -hmm. mm, since i'm using the out of box community feature uh, i think i have to use uh, i mean for multi language email templates i'll have to use vf email template 
otherwise i will have to disable that setting and send the email using send email or email composer uh, which probably won't be uh, as automated as we want to be here how do you mean you would be sending welcome emails manually using email composer yeah that that's why i'm saying you know that that won't work uh, so the community welcome email feature using uh, a vf email template uh, will will help us in this case uh, wherein we just need to define vf email template in the supported language and use that as the community email template that's it but is your question that apart from that is there any other declarative feature mm -hmm. think about it no i i can't think of any other declarative feature at the moment okay. that's fine um maybe i missed this um so i think for the corporate donors um the they should have a, an annual donation um how was the process there yes so for the corporate donator uh, donators uh, we have so we, they will when they will sign up basically uh, we will create an opportunity uh, for them uh, with with the uh, you know the requested commitment so let's say if they they are committed to donate 20000 usd so that will be the opportunity amount and we'll create a donation bracket and then we will link it to the campaign via campaign donation and uh, yeah so that that's how they will contribute to the donation and uh, if if let's say they create another donation uh, you know we'll create another donation record with a separate opportunity and the campaign donation for for that to track that campaign donation so it will be always 12 month period for the opportunity start and end date Uh, so, 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 so they signed a contract on one opportunity, and how is then the 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 next year handled? Yes. So there will is be a, a yes. Uh, I I got your point. So if let's say they are uh, uh, you know uh, on the next year, there will be a renewal process, which is not mentioned in the scenario. But I'm assuming let's say we will like to renew it, right? The donations, and so like. one month before the donation end date uh, for that particular commitment uh, we'll have a batch apex uh, running which will kind of create a task uh, for the corporate team uh, uh, assign them to under their account wherein they can or the previous opportunity right where uh, uh, they will have to follow up with the team uh, donation corporate and ask them that if they would like to continue and if yes then they will create another donation with the new commitment okay but they signed a contract about this already yes and now you want to create a task and some manual follow up um, yeah i mean specifically can... asked to to digitize and accelerate the process yes so in that case we can create like a, a like a renewal donation record as well the way we capture the contract renewal process as part of our sales channel so uh and using the same uh, you know donation uh, the existing donation will create a renewal donation and uh, you know but since uh, there is no approval so typically before the renewal uh, we create the renewal but we need to take consent of the corporate uh, that they are willing to continue since they signed the contract for the one year right so in order to extend it we'll take some consent it can be tracked in salesforce under the account or not and then we will continue with that chance we are over time here so and aram is starting presentation in 15 so maybe we should jump in in feedback 